So I don't want to go too much, too too deep too deep into this. I I keep I keep filming this video over and over again, and I I just feel like I'm I'm being super long-winded and just I don't know. I just I don't think that stuff's important to me anymore. I just I'm making this video because I said I was going to get help last month or a month and a half ago, and I've been going to therapy, and I think it is helping. It's difficult to tell. It's because it's only been five or six weeks, just a handful of sessions, but it's the first time I've gone to therapy in my adult life, and it does open your eyes to a lot of things. It does kind of hold your hand in navigating your mind a little bit. But the reason I'm making this video when otherwise I've been actively trying to avoid my personal life and just diving headfirst into music content and spending exponentially more time just working on music and just developing and writing and trying to find purpose in what I'm doing and just trying to, I guess, just move forward. But last night, I had kind of this, this mini epiphany. I don't want to say it's a full-blown epiphany, but... Normally when, when you, you go through a breakup, it's, it's really common to try and erase everything um, from, from your mind just because it's painful. Even, even though I was the perpetrator, it's still, it's still difficult going through a breakup and having, having that person not there anymore and kind of having, having a portion of your life fall apart. Um, and I've kind of reconciled with all of this because it's, it, it was all my fault. I th everyone knows that, and of course I know that. But it's up to me to ask why and how and how do I fix myself as a person and give myself purpose again. I left one thing in, in the bathroom, and it was this thing that said I love you, or I guess I, I heart you, and it was from Jacqueline, and she wrote it, she wrote it, I don't know, maybe halfway through the relationship, or early on in the relationship. Um, and I always left it there because I thought it was cute. And then when everything fell apart and everything changed and I kind of had to sit back and take a long, hard look at myself and what I had done, after removing all that stuff and almost kind of removing blame by not having to look at it and having to kind of torture myself by looking at things that make me feel remorseful and make me feel like, wow, I, I really, I really fucked this up. I really fucked everything up. And I really, I really messed up. I left that one thing there after everything was removed. Just so in the morning or in the afternoon, when, whenever I wake up, I, I can look in the mirror and I can see that and it can remind me of what I did and kind of what I became and all the traits that I've kind of grown to hate about myself and kind of just yeah but last night I I decided to to erase it and that was kind of the last thing in the house and the reason why I did that is because just having that up there to remind me of what a piece of shit I am and what an ugly person I can be stems all the way back to why I even moved into this house and why I started really making the art, the kind of art that I do now and how it's incredibly counterproductive and unhealthy to do that as, as a human being. And when I moved into this house a year and a half ago, I made a conscious decision to live in the middle of nowhere and have this idea that even though everyone's telling me you need a social life. You need you need you need to be a real person. You need to be a well-adjusted human being, uh, generally, to be healthy and to have to be mentally healthy. And I ignored all that because I thought I was above it, and that I thought so highly of myself, and that I I just thought I'm I'm an artist. I can I I can create. I don't need I don't need friends. I don't need people around me. I'm I'm an introvert anyway. I don't need that. I created this kind of uh, this life for myself to where it's so incredibly isolated and I get to make YouTube videos and make records and 
all this stuff, which a lot of it I'm, I'm incredibly proud of. And that was fine and dandy for a long time, over, over a year even. But when everything comes crashing down and you have to answer for all the ugly things you've cultivated in, inside yourself, just all, all the actions that, that you've, you've done and, and all, the, all the people that you've hurt, and you have to stand up to all of that and, and kind of take a good hard look at yourself. And it, it's not pretty and make a conscious decision whether I want to change or I, or I want... I, I want I want to eliminate all this stuff that I've built up over the past few years. And I've realized that I've constructed my whole life around this whole isolation thing and this whole damaged artist thing, which is just, it's kind of bullshit. The whole thing, it's incredibly counterproductive. The whole, the whole manufactured sadness thing, that even when I'm sad, I feel like I can't make good art unless I'm depressed or unless I'm suicidal or sad. And if I truly think that I'm, I'm a creative person and thinks that, that I, have, I have a message to send to the world or, or interesting things that I want to make in the future, being like this doesn't work. It just doesn't. And I realized this when everything fell apart and all my friends left and... All my relationships fell fell apart because of the choices that I had made and and the personality traits that I had uh, created. So this place that that I consciously moved into and tailored this stupid reclusive artist lifestyle around has turned in, into my personal hell. I I can't I can't live like this anymore. I can't be like this. I still think I can be creative without being sad all the time. But the people that have accused me of getting into relationships and destroying them simply for artistic purposes or to get inspiration, I think that's crazy because that's not real. It's not, it's not real emotion if you know exactly what you're doing and it's all calculated. That's not what emotion is. Emotion is not calculated. That's not how it works. But that's how I thought it worked. I think a good step in the right direction is I probably need to move. I need to move to somewhere more populated. I need to move somewhere where I can just be more exposed to the world and maybe try and have friends and maybe try and have a life outside of YouTube and not be so self-involved and not be so into my work all the time to where I go crazy. It's not healthy. and. I don't know, I, I just feel like I'm wasting my life a little bit on all of this. Like, I can spend the next couple years just waking up every day and making YouTube videos and trying to, to progress, but that's not progressing, that's being complacent, that's putting a band-aid on some much bigger issues. It's keeping yourself busy when the ship is sinking. In the past two months, I've had more suicidal thoughts than I've ever had in my entire life, and that's not due to mental illness. It's not due to depression and a, and a chemical imbalance in my brain. That's mostly due to the fact that I had to answer for myself, and I had to take a long, good, hard look in the mirror and realize that the person that I've become and, and the personality I've cultivated in the past lifetime that I've had is very very flawed and to have to have the suicidal thoughts is the idea that is it fixable i don't know it do do i do i have to live with myself for being like this can i turn it around can i turn into a person with a clear goal and clear purpose in their life and not just somebody who just wants to be liked by others well obviously i i, I do love being on, on YouTube, or at least certain aspects of it, and I do love having a platform to where I can make stuff, and it feels really, really good when it resonates with people. But the darker, uglier parts have gotten too dark and ugly, and I've realized how immature I am, and how you can't grow if you're just sitting by yourself staring at the ceiling for months on end. You don't grow that way. You don't grow just by thinking by yourself. You need you need input from others. You need you need to collaborate with the world. And if you're sitting here by yourself, you don't you don't do that. You just you just let all the bad parts fester and they grow and they take over and it's it's just a horrible way to live and it's not a good way 
for self-recovery. So that's where I'm at right now. I guess I kind of have a vague idea of where I'm going or, or it's, it's important to know what would fix you or at least trying to find ways to to find purpose in my life and to to grow as a human being. Okay, I don't, I'm really bad at ending videos.